the top five reasons the global flood may have actually happened. All right, let's see it. Number five, human documented history of the flood. If a global flood happened, you'd expect people around the world in ancient history to have told this story. And they do. Basically, all the people. So this sounds reasonable, as long as you don't think too hard about it, and as long as you don't actually go research the details of these traditions. Because once you do that, some things bubble to the surface that complicate the relevance of this observation to the global flood. For instance, it's not all peoples. It's not even a majority of peoples. It is a minority of social groups that have these traditions. And if you go look at those traditions, they locate these events in different times and in different places, and they differ in scope. In fact, where we have multiple iterations of these traditions in many societies, you can actually see the tradition being elaborated on and being changed. For instance, this creator mentioned the Sumerian tradition. The earliest king lists don't mention a flood at all. It's not until the old Babylonian period that we see the breaking up of the king list by the insertion of a flood myth that starts off as a localized flood that talks about the bodies against the river banks and then changes to a more global flood. And so we can see the tradition being elaborated on being innovated as time passes. This is not indication that all of these traditions descend from one single accurate tradition as reflected in the Bible. This indicates that different peoples had these social memories about localized cataclysmic events and interpreted them in ways that are similar across time and space because intuitively humans like to interpret such events in similar ways. Uh, it is perfectly intuitive to take natural disasters and interpret them as the agency of some imagined or unseen agent and anger is most commonly attributed to violent natural disasters. So no, this is not evidence of Noah's flood. Number four, geologic evidence of a catastrophic flood. There is evidence all over the world of unfathomably massive flooding. You can see the size of these small ripples that are the result of a local flood. And these pictures from the Camas Prairie in Idaho, which is in the path of this Missoula flood, has the same kind of ripples, but the scale is hundreds if not thousands of times larger. So pointing out that there is such a thing as an outburst flood, and here a glacial lake outburst flood, is not evidence of a global flood in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. It's just pointing out what scientists have long known, that there are outburst floods that have happened around the world and through time. And these are precisely the kinds of cataclysmic floods that, if they occurred in the vicinity of a social group, could be elaborated upon throughout the generations to result in these later traditions about cataclysmic floods that were the result of angry gods that seemed to cover all the earth. Number three, oceans underneath the Earth's crust. One of the first questions that comes to mind when thinking of a global flood is where did the water come from? Which is a good question at surface level. But if you read the biblical account of Noah's flood, it's very clear where the water came from. Genesis 7:11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth. Where did the water come from? The Bible clearly says that the flood waters came from inside of the Earth. So that's absolutely not what the Bible says. The Bible says the headwaters, the springs, the fountains of the Tehom, the abyss, the great deep burst forth. This is not a reference to water on or in the earth. This is a reference to the waters of chaos that surround the earth and also sit above the solid dome that was created precisely to suspend those waters, to allow the waters beneath to recede, to reveal the dry land. So this creator wants to frame these waters as coming from inside the earth when that does not fit ancient Israelite cosmology in any way, shape, or form. And they want to frame it that way because they are about to share scientific insight that suggests there is water trapped in another form within the earth's crust. But uh, this illustration of ancient Israelite cosmology shows that does not fit. The waters that provided part of the deluge comes from the waters that are below and around the earth, not from water inside the earth. And this illustration also shows the sky, which is the solid dome that was created in Genesis 1-7 in order to suspend the waters above that dome from the waters beneath. And this is the other source for the waters of the deluge that this creator conspicuously omitted from their description of the source of those waters because it is completely unscientific to say the Bible was right in saying the windows 
that were within that solid dome opened up to allow the waters suspended above the dome to fall down on the earth as rain. They're trying to make the case that part of this is scientific and they're ignoring the fact that the other part of it is manifestly not. And scientists have potentially just recently found this water. They now estimate that there's more water underneath the earth's crust than above. How did the author of the Bible get this right over 3,000 years ago? Good guess, Moses. So they didn't get it right. This is an intentional misreading of the biblical text. And additionally, from what I've been able to gather, this water that is circulating between the different layers of the Earth's crust in non-liquid form is estimated to be about the same amount of water as exists above the surface of the Earth. So even if it were all changed to liquid form and ejected up above the surface of the Earth, it would not be enough to cover the surface of the Earth. But because it would also be entirely upheaving the Earth's crust and rearranging it all, that water would all basically be boiling while there were constant earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and the entire earth uh, changing its fundamental structure. So this is obviously not evidence of Noah's flood. Number two, the ice age. The fact that there was even an ice age at all provides strong evidence for a global flood. Why? We all have this idea of what the ice age was, but the earth was only about four degrees colder. However, up to 30% of the earth was covered in ice, glaciers technically. Today, less than 5% of the earth is covered in glaciers. So where did all the snow come from to cover 30% of the earth? What do you need to form ice? Cold and water. If you only have cold, then you just have a cold age not an ice age. Where did the precipitation come from? At the beginning of this last winter, Buffalo, New York experienced the most massive blizzard in its recorded history, when a lake effect storm caused 60 inches of snow to encase the city. And this can explain where the water for the ice age came from. So I'm at a loss to explain how this is evidence for the flood. All this seems to me to be saying is that all the water could have come from precipitation only that ignores that precipitation comes from evaporation. This is part of the water cycle that we learn about in elementary school. So the ice age had a lot more ice covering the earth because it drew it from the seas and the sea level was hundreds of feet lower during the ice age. So unless I am entirely misunderstanding what this creator is saying, this is not evidence in any way, shape, or form. This is literally an elementary school level misunderstanding. Number one evidence that a global flood may have actually happened, the fossil record. How is a fossil formed? When an animal dies, the scavengers almost immediately get to work on beginning the process of disassembling the formerly living thing. Because of the efficacy of this recycling process, dead animals stand basically no chance at being preserved in any complete or articulated way. And this is why, in in order for something to become a fossil, it basically needs to be rapidly buried by mud or sand. So the very fact that fossils are found all over the earth is compelling evidence for a global rapid animal burying event, like a flood. So this is not evidence of a global flood in any sense whatsoever. This is evidence of flash floods, localized floods, landslides, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, all the kinds of natural disasters that continue to this day also existed anciently. It also explains why marine fossils like whales and sharks have been found in the middle of deserts and also on the top of Mount Everest. So we can already explain much better why these fossils are found in these regions. It's because these regions were at one point under the sea. The Himalayas are also the youngest mountains on Earth. They only began forming around 50 million years ago with the collision of two tectonic plates. Prior to that, they were at lower levels and at one point under sea. That's where the fossils come from. We can already fit all of this together into a scientific theoretical framework that does not require manipulating, massaging, overlooking, or lying about the data. So what do you think? Did a global flood actually happen? There are no data that support a global flood, and this video has simply presented distortions and manipulations and fabrications of data intended to convince people who don't really know any better, but who are just looking for a reason to feel validated in their beliefs, even if that just means we gin up the tiniest little sliver of, hey, it's not entirely impossible. That's the goal of apologetics, and that's why this video, once you scratch the very surface of these claims, falls apart.